Welcome to the Biology 182 lecture on vertebrates. This video will talk about the amniotes mammals. Students should be able to describe the evolutionary characteristics of mammals and understand the evolutionary distinction and the orders of mammals. Mammals are milk producing amniotes. They evolved from an amniote ancestor earlier than the birds did. Their subclasses include Prototheria, Metatheria, and Eutheria. All mammals have mammary glands. Mammary, mammary glands are used to feed young. Mammals give live birth to young, except monotremes. These newborns eat milk that the mother's body creates through the exocrine glands called mammary glands. An advantage is they can store the nutrition for the offspring for future use. And their production of milk confers the immunity of the mother to the offspring. In addition to mammary glands, mammals also have hair or fur. Some mammals use their hair or fur as an insulator. They are endothermic and have to regulate their own body temperature. So hair can help insulate the animal such as a polar bear. Additional functions include sensation. The vibrissae are the little whiskers that you see on sea lions and walruses. Also, they use them for camouflage, like how the lion blends in to his background on the savanna. And finally, they can be used for defense. You can see the steamit and the porcupine or the echinida. These all exhibit defense, quills, or modified hair. Mammals also have specialized teeth. They can have incisors, canines, premolars, and molars that are all adapted for different diets. They have an enlarged skull because mammals have a larger brain. And so to protect their brain, they have a larger skull than reptiles. They have a single lower jawbone, which is fused together, unlike reptiles. And they have three bones found in the middle ear, which are called ossicles. Mammals bear live young, and they have a placenta, which is the food for the embryo, similar to the yolk sac. The gestation time in the womb is much longer than the gestation for other organisms to produce eggs. They develop inside the mammal's uterus, again, except for monotremes. Mammals are endothermic and must maintain homeostasis. They have to regulate their body temperature, regardless of the environment, to maintain a constant homeostatic environment within their body. Their larger and more complex brain leads to a more complicated nervous system. They have a four-chambered heart, and they have two sets of teeth the baby teeth, and then one other set of adult teeth. There are several clades of mammals. The subclass, Prototheria, consists of the monotremes. The monotremes are platypus and echidina. These are egg-laying placental, sorry, egg-laying non-placental, organisms. They have poorly developed nipples. However, they are mammals and exhibit all other characteristics of the amniote. The next clade is multituberculata. There is only one species and it is found in Asia. It is from the Middle Jurassic period. It stems from an ancestor from them and its name means wrinkled tooth and it's a type of rodent. The oldest known fossil is from around 160 to 35 million years ago. And so the one species that we see today is um, an extant species of this organism fossil. Another subclass of mammals is Theria. The first clade we'll talk about is Metatheria. Metatheria are the marsupials, and there are seven orders of marsupial. These include things like koala bears, kangaroos, wombats, wallabies, 
various organisms found in Australia. There's only one organism found in North America, and it's the possum. Marsupials have an incredibly fast gestation. It lasts between 12 days and five weeks, depending on the organism. So when they are born, they are very undeveloped and the fetal organism, which is called a joey, is blind, furless, and cannot regulate its own body temperature. So it crawls into the pouch of the mother. The pouch allows the joey to continue development for several months. In the pouch, it feeds on the teat and gets its milk from the mother. As the joey finally begins to fully develop, it will emerge from the pouch for short stints to explore the world and learn things about becoming um, the organism that it is. During this time, it is um, also going to continue to sleep, eat, and regulate its body temperature in the pouch, going out for short stints and coming back. It also allows the organism or the joey to be protected from any dangers in its habitat. The marsupial joey will continue to live inside its mother's pouch for up to one year. There are also clades of organisms under theria called eutheria, and these are the placental mammals. Placental mammals live long lives and have a complex placenta. They have very long gestation and they are very well developed at birth. You can see some of the main characteristics of organisms in the various orders of mammal. Rodentia is rodents like mice and rats, even beavers and porcupines. They're typically plant eaters and they gnaw. They typically have gnawing incisor teeth that continually grow. If they did not ever gnaw on things, eventually their incisors would grow into their bottom jaw. Chiopteras bats that eat insects and fruit, and they can fly, but they don't have wings. They are nocturnal, and they navigate by sonar. Eulyptophilia are shrews, moles, and hedgehogs, and they eat insects, and they're a more primitive placental mammal. Then we can get into primates, which are monkeys, apes, and humans. They have opposable thumbs, binocular vision, and very large brains, some of which are bipedal. We also see carnivora, which are cats, dogs, weasels, bears, seals, and sea lions. They are flesh-eating mammals with canine teeth. We see arterodactyly, which are deer, antelope, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, things like this that are herbivores, but they have hooves. Usually the hooves have two toes. Hippopotamus and other organisms do have four toes. Some of them have horns or antlers. We have diprotodontia, which are the kangaroos, koalas, possums, and wombats, which are marsupials mainly found in Australia. And lagomophora, which are rabbits and hares. They have powerful hind legs and those incisor-like teeth in the front. We have cetacea, which are whales and dolphins. They eat marine fish and plankton. They also have front limbs that are modified into flippers, but they follow the same structure and bones as humans and bats and other mammals. They have no hind limbs. They've become um, vestigial organs and they have a little hair except in their snout. We also see parasidactylia, which are horses, zebras, tapirs, and rhinoceroses. They are hoofed or herbivores with an odd number of toes, one for the horse, three for the rhino. Then we see the monotremata, which is the duck-billed platypus and the echidna, and they're egg-laying mammals. They're only found in Australia and also New Guinea. And then we have the proboscisia. These are the elephants. They have large trunks and modified tusks instead of top teeth. Students should be able to differentiate between monotremes and marsupials. They should be able to differentiate between metatheria and eutheria. Students should be able to identify the four major characteristics of mammals and indicate the differences between birds and mammals.